What's going on, everybody? Steve Kreiner, the Dog Soldier here. I am freaking excited. This is the first podcast since summer break. A lot of people don't know what summer break is, but summer break is when everybody that works their butt off in the winter, like me, and of course my guest today, he works hard in the winter too, but I think he works hard in the summer. But anyway, that's when we take a break. Had my girls here. We visited quite a bit. Me and Emily's been working on the house. I got into making tobacco pipes. So I'm making holsters, tobacco pipes, getting hunts lined up. I've got about all of my um, tags that I wanted to draw. draw and I'm, I got six big game hunts. I don't know. I just got so much to talk about tonight, and I hope I can do it all in an hour. I got a pretty cool guest on tonight, a buddy of mine. Mule Deer Insurance, Garrett Johnson. He also has a YouTube channel, Coyote Snipers. And I tell you what, he's a pretty good dude. He is an Instagram sensation. Out of all of us coyote hunters that play around the internet, we play on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Sportsman Channel. We all try to do our business. And everybody notices this one cat on Instagram. And I can't wait to start talking to him, so everybody say hi to Garrett Johnson. Garrett, what's up, brother? Hey, guys. What's going on? Sensations. When you say sensations, that reminds me of my wife's drill team during high school, so that's kind of weird, but I'll I'll take it. I'll take whatever. <laughs> well, you know, hey, uh, how old are you, Garrett? <laughs> uh, I'm going to be 35 November 3rd. Yeah, you're three years younger than me. That ain't that ain't really very uh, very much younger than me, but I tell you, I'll tell you right now, uh, when I see you, I see enthusiasm, I see talent, I see coyote killing. You know, me, I look at a little, a lot different stuff than most people, you know. I want to see marketing, I want to see, you know, the business aspect, but most of all, you're killing a hell of a lot of coyotes, just stacking yeah, them Yeah, we up. do, we do well for, for Utah, you know, I, I, I do pretty good for Utah, you know, it's taken me a lot of years to figure it out, and and different approaches than most most predator hunters but i feel like you know confidence is key right now and i'm very confident in what we're doing and how we're doing it and it's working out for us lately you know it's the last five or seven years it's just really really clicked for us yeah yeah you know dude you should like have your wife fire up her computer and watch this podcast because the host, you want me to dude the host of this podcast has it rocking and i'm i'm Dude, you should see the get-up I put on to compete with you tonight. <laughs> I'm going in to get the cell phone right now. i got to see this. <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's uh, funny. I can't wait. It might take me a minute to get a cell phone out here, but we'll you get know, one. You know what? We're kind of we're kind of backwoods boys out here. We don't. I don't even have... I don't even have Wi-Fi at my house. We don't have cable television. We don't have satellite television. We live out in the sticks, and we enjoy every minute of it. Yeah, you know, uh, I tell you what, we have I'm trying to get my garb on here. Dude, you ought to see me. It's awesome. What have you been up to anyway? Oh, geez, just tried to cram a four day four day work work week into three days we have a little uh utah has a pioneer deal during uh july it's the 24th of july kind of like the fourth of july for utah i got you so we've been busy i'm i'm a beer salesman by trade that's what i do every day and uh -oh. i just been trying to stock everybody back up and it's uh yeah it's quite the process well, I'm drinking clear American strawberry, some kind of sparkling water I stole out of the refrigerator. I couldn't drink beer right now anyway. I'm sitting here with a white tail hide drooped over me and a gladiator <laughs> helmet. I can't wait. I'm Dude, getting on here right now. And my nose itches really bad. You know, that's the thing. I'm trying to get up in here. So that's the thing. You know, we all do things a little different. I'm kind of edgy, and I'm kind of off the wall, and I pretty much do what I want, how I want, say what I want. And it seems like all of us outdoor personalities shine a little bit in different areas than other people. And, dude, who taught you how to take pictures? Oh, man. I uh, I actually kind of did this whole deal 
uh, I was actually, I was an athlete in high school, but there was a couple sports that I didn't get along with the coaches. And, um, instead of doing that, I actually became part of the yearbook staff, kind of the nerdy crew, but we, uh, did you beat him up? You throw down on him? <laughs> no, no, I wish I could have. He was like a 300 pound muscle bound dude. And I just, I just was 180 pound, just love to play baseball. He couldn't scare me away from baseball. So sweet. But uh, yeah, I uh, I just love photography always, and I've filmed I filmed a lot of wildlife, like uh, hunting movies, and I I guided for a long time, and I always packed the camera, and I took high dollar clients, and and. Uh, did a lot of did a lot of filming and a lot of photography and and stuff like that and honestly every every picture you see on that Instagram of mine is all all taken off of a cell phone. I mean yeah. it's just it's just angles and it's coming up with creative ways and I'm not gonna say I was the first one that came up with editing photos and stuff, but I definitely put my own tweak on it and that's I think that's that was that was huge you know right then and there when I I got into Instagram. This this October will be, um, I guess two years. October will be two years, you know. And we're, I think I should be like fifteen point five k, and we're just we're cranking. Oh, there you are. Look oh, at yeah. you, dude. Oh my gosh, I, I love it. I can't take pictures very good, but I can be me really, really, really good. Oh, that's hilarious. I bought this helmet on a roadside swap shop deal down in southern arkansas and i thought you know what i'm going to the mfk guys' place i'm gonna get me a gladiator helmet i'm gonna take some cool photos i'm gonna kill a lot of coyotes i'm gonna be tough and i thought i got a good deal on it because i really thought it was russell crowe's helmet right and uh so i gave 150 bucks for this thing and you can get them on amazon for like 60 bucks i mean it's steel dude i don't know if you can... this is kind of funny that uh that little get up kind of like you got right there my <clears throat> my hunt partner and hunts the world with me and stuff. Colton Gillen, he's from Wyoming. He's not very far from you. He just lives right there in Laramie. And yeah, we're, uh, we're going to be out filming a little bit next week and we're, we're planning on putting on some costumes and doing some fun things to get people wanting to watch our, watch our coyote sniper YouTube channel. I mean, everybody can kill coyotes on film, but not everybody can have as much fun as we do. Yeah. You know, um, YouTube's a tough game. Um, and I promise you, I've watched your guys' stuff. And everybody at home, if you guys just, obviously you're watching live on YouTube. And for you guys that ain't watching live, you're checking this out on iTunes or the SoundCloud platform. All you got to do is search Coyote Snipers on YouTube and you can find Garrett and his bunch. And uh, I'll tell you right now, man, YouTube's a tough business. Like, you can buy subscribers, but then you don't have no views. You can buy views, but then you don't have no subscribers. But to do it like we're doing it, uh, you know, we work hard at marketing the channel. You work hard at marketing the channel, and it's steadily growing. It takes a long time for uh, YouTube to grow. So don't ever lose your heat on that. You know, it's going to yeah. – it takes a while. Um, I think I think we've grown pretty fast, I, but I mean I can only attribute that right back to our social medias, you know, and I mean, we've probably, I don't know even what we're at, but we're well over a thousand, I think, or whatever. But man, just in the three months we've been on there, I think everybody's kind of like, wow, how'd you do that? You know, and like, it's, it's, it's all linked together, really, I think. Yeah. I'm taking my uh, gladiator helmet off and I'm getting my good business side on now. That's the thing with uh, me. I go. wear, I wear, a, excuse me, I wear a lot of hats, mostly dog soldier hats and glass and assassin hats, but. Um, you know, one thing, I want to talk about all kinds of stuff tonight. I want to talk about coyote hunting. I want to talk about um, sounds. I, w I want to talk about all kinds of cool stuff, but I, I really like the business part of it because you're a new you're a new guy, fairly new on the scene, and really starting to get noticed now. And, uh, you know, I love what you're doing. Um, I obviously, I think I can... I think I could do stuff on my end on my YouTube channel better. I love what you're doing on your YouTube channel, and I'm pretty critical of myself and think I could do things 
better than I am doing them now. And I know you're, I've talked to you on the phone several times. You're a perfectionist and I know you're not satisfied with anything you do either. Um, right. You know, we all try to succeed in the business or we try, we try to, you know, make our way in the business. And this YouTube channel is just like killing coyotes. You know, if you stay at it, you stay consistent, you stay true, you know, usually you're going to make it. Um, you know, I, you wouldn't believe how bad I wanted to do my podcast without a shirt on tonight. Dude, it's not rip. too late, Steve. It, it's not? Should I, <laughs> nope. should I do it? You know, the female watchers are out there just like, oh, Steve, please just take it off. Well, if we if we get some if we get some comments, these guys are quiet right now. They must like you because they don't uh they're not talking very much right now. But I don't know about that. Uh, are they chatting a lot right now? I don't even know. Oh, I'm not. Okay. I, I I log back off. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well, anyway. Just... Anyway, I tell you right now, if these guys start commenting and want me to take my shirt off. I will, and then I'll call them all. Funny. You gotta have. <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta have some. You gotta have some ladies wanting to, I know, have right? to take that thing off. You bet. I know it's it's crazy, uh, but you know what? Hey, you know, speaking of YouTube, so there's a big there's a big something out there I want to talk about YouTube. So, first of all, YouTube is a more uh, left, more liberal um, venue than a lot of us like. Um, you know, our channels, whether it's yours or mine or someone else's, we've all. Um, We've all been labeled as controversial because we got firearms, we're hunting, yada, 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 and everybody doing firearms or blowing stuff up. Um, Demolition Ranch is a good YouTube channel. They just shoot guns, blow stuff up. And, and uh, you know, we've all been labeled controversial, but I really want to take the time. You know, there's not many people watching live right now, but there's going to be, you know, uh, this thing gets watched or listened to and downloaded a few thousand times on iTunes, and then it gets listened to probably another thousand times on um, YouTube. But so the thing about it is, we have been labeled controversial, but you don't understand that. Uh, and I'm not saying you; I just people out there don't understand that. Even though we've been labeled controversial, the YouTube default settings: if you don't have an account. Or you create a new account and you search for Coyote Snipers or you search for Dog Soldier or you search for something else. You can still find us. The only thing that's going to stop you is if somebody physically puts a block on controversial channels. So even though I don't really condone any limitation whatsoever on freedom of speech, which is television or digital media, whatever, um, YouTube's not completely off the handle yet. And we're all doing, I know uh, you're looking at different avenues, and we're looking at Carbon and Roku, and we're getting that, that started, and a lot of TV shows are going to Carbon. But, you know, a lot of people are like, you know, there's people charging now for information. Did you know that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, you and I have talked about it. So it's like this. I don't really know how to say this. Like I don't want to rub anybody wrong because I've I've I rub people wrong and that's just me and and sometimes, but you know I'm I'm a conversationalist. Uh, I like have conversations. I like talking. I like and I don't lie. And I, I'm not I'm not completely full of crap, really. But you know what? I think everybody listening out there should put in the time, put in the effort, learn just like we learn. You know when I learned how to kill coyotes. Uh, I got a flat top recorder and a cassette tape through in my lap, and I had no clue what I was doing, and I just accidentally figured it out. I couldn't afford internet till after I was 22 years old. I mean, it it, it was horrible. Um, so, um, with that being said, what kind of people would we be if if I did a YouTube channel and said, "Hey guys, um, I'm going to give you a tip of the day." But you got to pay for it. You know, we're talking about killing coyotes here. Do you agree whatsoever? If you disagree, that's fine. So make sure if you, if you think I'm an SOB, Garrett, you can say that. Oh, I'll tell you. Yeah, that's that's for sure. But uh, do I think you're wrong? Yeah. No. I mean, <clears throat> not, not really. I mean, there are people out there that I've looked up to and, and things like that that, you know, I would be willing to pay to just hear it for a minute to be 
to be quite frank, you know, I might, I might subscribe for a month and if there's not something going on there that I can take away from it. But I, I honestly feel like I can take something away from anybody. But if it's only going to cost me two or ten dollars or whatever it's going to cost me, I mean, I'm, I'm down to pay for it. Honestly, I mean, yeah. for a minute, if they're not going to provide something that I don't already know, then I'm, I'm going to bounce. I'm going to get out. But I'm willing to learn for that amount of money. Honestly, I'm, yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not completely against it. So, I yeah. mean. You know, Speed Williams, I, Speed, you're a team roper. You know, Speed Williams does that. Yeah, absolutely. But I subscribed to his stuff for a while, too. But I just think, I mean, I just really think, my opinion, you know, if we were team roping or trying to get to the NFR or something like that, I mean, a very technical aspect. But I just... Hang it, on and look at it this way. How many DVDs did you buy when you or, or or VHS tapes did you buy when you were up and coming? Yeah, I mean I, when you I were trying to figure that. it out. I, I I have spent so much money on on VHS tapes and DVD. I didn't get that stuff gave to me back then. I was trying to learn. I didn't have YouTube. I didn't have all these other outlets. And if they're going to provide something for a service, I'm I'm going to. I, I guess I'm going to try to look at it and see what's going on out there, I guess. I mean, well, you what's know, 10 bucks? You know, a DVD cost me over $15 back then when yeah. I tried buying them. Well, from the, out, from the outside looking in, you know, I don't care who's doing what, really. Uh, my dad, yeah. my dad, you know, taught me to pay attention to myself and not worry about everybody else. And I really do. That's why I'm not mentioning no names. It, it's just, um, I don't know how many people's doing it. Uh, to be honest about it, but I know I I just in today's I don't know it just it kind of is something I've been really thinking about a lot here lately, and you know I I don't know I'm so torn between it I don't even know how to respond sometimes um, I know we well, talked about it a little bit uh, there's there's so much good information out there for free but everybody thinks that there's a secret sound. Yeah. Everybody, that's what keeps selling all your products is everyone thinks that there's, there's, there's something that we know that they don't and they want to figure out what yeah. that is. And like I've told all my followers, DM me, hit me up anywhere you want. I'll explain to you exactly what I'm doing. I'm not going to hide anything from you. People think that yeah. a lot of these videos, you know, they're watching, they're like, oh, they, they put a sound over that sound. Well, some of them might. But in our videos, what sound you're hearing playing in the background is the sound that we were using, and yeah. we're more than happy to explain what that sound was and why we used it. You know, it, I had Gerald Stewart call me the other day. Ger See, Gerald Stewart got me in the into the business years ago, recording sounds and monitoring the uh, market for piracy and stuff. And he called me. He's like, dude, so I've been sick. I've been laid up. I've been recovering from this surgery, and... I found your YouTube channel, I'm watching it, and man, there's a lot of sounds that sound familiar in the background, you need to call me, so I called him, and it's like, what's up, and he goes, what's up with you, and I'm like, first of all, Steve Kreiner has his favorites, and I just happen to have a call that I can put my favorites on, and he started laughing, <laughs> so, you know, I remember the days, I remember the days when people were calling each other, you know, me and Al were really guilty of it, when me and Al worked together, we talked a lot with each other, and... We would watch, you know, somebody on TV, and they were, they were, I mean, and I'm guilty of it, I'll be honest with you, we were like, oh my gosh, they're using this sound, blah, 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 and this sound, well, it's not that hard, yeah, I mean, we all had calls we could put whatever, we could put jukebox music on them, so, you know, it wasn't that hard, but it just never clicked, and then now it's, it's the same way, it's like, oh man, you know, Kreiner's using a Johnny Stewart sound on his flex tone collar, well, yeah, if you're not, you're missing out, you know? Right, yeah. Um, and, uh, hey, uh, speaking of sounds and, and calls and stuff like that, on the business platform of what you're doing, what do you got going on? You got any apparel? You got any sounds? You got any calls? You got yeah, any... Yeah, I'm kind of in the process. Like I said, I'm really kind of just a country boy. We, <laughs> I'm, I'm in the process of getting a website. You know, all that stuff really, really comes hard to me i don't know 
if people believe that or not, just because of the social media following that I have. But I basically just tried to figure Instagram out the best I could. And I had a lot of good people showing me the way on Instagram. And I, I, I focused on that and I made myself as good as I possibly could on Instagram. And so I'm trying to, I'm trying to move over into that, you know, that way of the world of what I kind of had. I'm so far behind. I mean, I, I have apparel. I've sold over ten thousand dollars worth of apparel almost a year ago to since a year ago today, Sweet. just off of direct messages, off of Instagram. Boy, ain't that and, a pain in the ass? Yeah, it, it's a pain in the ass, and I've got a good a good wife that takes good care of me and 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 helps me out with that end of it. She bitches and moans about it all the time, but you know, and in reality, we're we're breaking even. We're just making enough money to go back to the shirt stop and print that many more you know and i know people get upset with it and whatnot but we're just doing our best but we're you know it'd be nice to have an investor or somebody that had some money i could i mean i'm just a, i'm just a blue collar guy like everybody else like i tell everybody you know there's those younger younger boys that come up to me younger men or whatever you know and they come up to me and they're like oh my gosh you're the brush wolf hunter i'm like dude settle down i mean i'm sit down right here at the <laughs> bar stool and Pull up a chair and let's have a burger and a fry together, man. That's who I am. Like it feels good, though. I'm, don't I'm it? nobody. Yeah, it does. And and I've talked to you about that. And that yeah. that that part of it has really just humbled me. And I I absolutely love that. You know, I never thought I'd be signing autographs, and I don't feel like I deserve it. But the kids want it, and they and they 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 look up to me, and I want to be a good role model. And that's what I'm really trying to do is take a real humble approach to what I'm doing. I want to love and like everybody, and you know, I, I don't. You well, know, I'm just, I'm gonna you, tell you right now, you're shit out of luck when it comes to some of that you just said. Yeah, I know. I yeah, mean, I that's know. what this podcast was designed about. This, I mean, this this whole podcast that I'm doing now that I, I'm not stuck into doing it, but so many people like if I quit doing this thing for a week, my phone blows off, my instant instant messages, and I mean, there's so many people that watch and listen to this thing, and and I, man, yeah. I designed this thing because, you know what, it, I said some things on the first podcast that I would say to my buddies when they were sitting right next to me, and there's some guys that's not my buddies no more because of this podcast, and it sucks because I didn't say anything wrong, but, you know, that's part of business sometimes. I built this podcast to because I loved and wanted to be friends with everybody, and I wanted to bring the industry together, and it, man, it went south in a hurry. <laughs> yeah i know what you mean i know what you mean and a lot of it's because of jealousy and and you know and, and money and contracts yeah. and and black tape you know i don't personally hold anything against anybody um yeah. you know i've said a few things that was taken way out of context and you know um sure you know nobody you know you try to talk to them about it and they just soul up but you know it's yeah I mean, I'm I, I don't, like it's you use crazy to me. You're using Lucky just, Duck, right? Yeah, and okay. that, that's what I wanted to kind of say when you were saying, you know, guys are saying, "Oh yeah, that Kriner's playing Johnny Stewart sounds," and I'm like, you know, guys are paying for these sounds. Okay, they're yeah. they're downloading these sounds from Tony Tevy, whoever you know, whoever's making these sounds. But why would you not just go out and spend three hundred and some odd dollars on a Revolution and play Rick sounds? You, Gosh, you know, man. I know that they're the best, one of some of the best sounds out there. I mean, Rick has spent his entire life. He is like the sound God, in my opinion. Like, oh, yeah. I don't, I don't think well, you could ever, ever do anything like what Rick's created. Rick, he texts me today and he says, Garrett, you know, he's, he's funny. He's like, he's, he's always talking about how he's a backwood pecker head, you know, and this <laughs> and that and the other He's telling me he's like Garrett. I, I need you to I need you to create me some of your like basically what he's trying to do is kind of like Primos has done in the past on, on their uh, Alpha Dog was yeah. Randy put together sequences yeah and he's like I need I need your sequences you know and I'm sure he sent it to a couple other guys but it was just kind of neat you know and I said well, Rick I says I'm old school I says this text and stuff. I was teasing him. I'm like, this text and stuff's for the birds. Just give me a call and we'll go through it. He's like, all right, I'll call you in a day or two. He's funny. 
He's I like the man. hell out of him. We're going to do an episode one of these days. Oh, I, I can't I, wait to listen to it. You know, well, we're going to do we're going to film an episode too and uh we're going to leave our callers out of camera and we're not going to promote nothing. We're just going to go have a good time. And see, you know, like, you know, having you on the podcast, you know, from a business standpoint, you use a different brand, you shoot a different rifle, you, sh- you use different camo. The only thing me and you do and before I say this, I do want to tell everybody at home this podcast is brought to you by Alaskan Guide Creations. And the reason there why we go. the reason why is because out of all the sponsors we have, the only thing that aligns is that brand right there because it's a good product. We me and you both have used it for years and I'm not gonna turn this into an infomercial. I mean they're great products and you can get them at yeah. tacticalpredatorhunter.com or you can text Garrett and he can get you hooked up. But you know, everything really from a business standpoint, from a business standpoint, everything me and you do is totally, I mean, like, we're direct. If you, if you really, from a business standpoint, me and you are direct competition, really. Right. I mean. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm telling you right now, it pisses me off to no end. It, it pisses me off to no end that, that Garrett Johnson, the brush wolf hunter, the coyote sniper, the representative of many great brands that I don't have on my show, is is humbling me enough that you're actually on my podcast and I appreciate it completely. And I have billboards on the bottom right of my podcast rolling through, and that's all my sponsors. And not one, you know what? When I called you today and I said, or I texted you and said, Garrett, you want to do a podcast tonight? Yep, call you at seven forty. Okay, dude. Not you didn't ask for nothing. You didn't want nothing. You didn't complain about nothing. You ain't afraid of nothing. You're not. See, that's what I don't get about the industry no. and how it's going is be wh- why can't we all just be friends i mean yeah you got buddies that probably use different guns and you're not gonna be like no hell no they can know. be right on my i that that kind of goes to a, a sensitive subject with me really what uh jeff and i kind of talked about this day, one day you know and jeff kind of his own person and and uh him and I, we tease and razz each other quite a bit. And he says to me one day, and it kind of, it really sunk in. And he says, Garrett, what, what's a sponsor? And I, I told him, I says, you know, I got these great sponsors. I'm kind of like, you know, doing this with this company and this with this company. But honestly, what is a sponsor? A sponsor should be somebody that pays you a check. No one is paying me a check. I am getting zero checks written from any company. So what I'm doing for these companies is they know that I have this great following. I have awesome engagement. Engagement's huge to these companies because yeah. I don't I don't go around shamelessly plugging the companies that I'm associated with. The way I've done it, I feel, is a clean approach. I, I use the products that I believe in. I honestly believe in them. I know you've said that. You believe in your products, and I believe in mine. And what I'm doing is I'm using these products to their fullest extent, and if you see them in my videos or in my in my pictures, you're gonna ask me about them. Hey, yeah. what gun? What caliber? What what uh, what are you using? Why do you use King's camouflage? Why do you do this? Why do you do that? Why the lucky duck? And yeah. then I'll tell you. But these guys that are throwing this down your throat, and like Instagram became this weird thing. Like, oh, let me put this on my story. I just got all this free stuff sent to me in the mail, and it this and that and the other. And some of them probably didn't even get free stuff, but they make it look like they got free stuff. Yeah. And it, it, it's just crowded with bullshit, honestly. I mean, I could tell everybody about all the cool shit I get daily, but I don't because that's not who I am. I, I just want to use great products, and I don't want to get free products from companies that I don't believe in. Yeah. And that's what I – if I approach a company, it's because I believe in their product. It's not because I want a free handout. Because now I know that I can get a free handout, but it's not its not going to benefit me if I don't believe in it. Yeah, you know, and, and that's what I don't get. I mean, I've been gar holed a few times throughout the years. You know, HS was, was a, a tough time for me um, because I was brand new. That's 12, 13 years ago. I was brand new, and, and I have a hard time keeping my mouth shut. We all know that. And yeah. You know, I was told one time, well, you got to be the expert. And I'm like, I'm not an expert. And they're like, 
And at that time, you know, believe it or not, 13 years ago, I was the only guy in the Midwest that was really laying down a lot of footage and tearing it up, you know. I mean, 13 years ago, there just wasn't, it wasn't nowhere near like it is now. So I was noticed, and I just had a hard time. I I played the outdoor personality bit forever. I rode that train. You know, I got lucky and won the championships one time. I sounded like a coyote. Uh, in my opinion, not as good as some of the people I called against, but the judge thought I was better than everybody else that day. Um, you know, there's so many things in this. There's so many things in this industry, and this is a freaking awesome podcast because we're having a great conversation. Um, you know, there's so many things that go with this business, and 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 I'll be honest with you, I've told you, and and, and I've had personal conversations with you, and and. Uh, we've had really in-depth personal conversations I don't want to get into on on here, but you know you're in the right direction. You're on you're on the right path, and your goals or your end game or your agenda. You've told me a hundred percent what it is, and you're working toward that agenda. Um, you know, there's a lot of people in the industry right now trying to do and doing and succeeding on different platforms compared to what you know my facebook i got 15,000 fans you got you got 15,000 on instagram and um you know so i mean we all have our different um venues i guess but it's so easy nowadays like at the push of a button you can be anybody you want to be like i could be a rocket scientist tomorrow if i wanted to be you know um yeah it, it, Facebook is like well, at least with Instagram like e- at least with Instagram you can't fake well if you fake what you're doing you got to change your clothes an awful lot and you got to change you know you got to change you know positions an awful lot you know the good thing about face or Instagram is you can really create content and you can do it right and you can tell if somebody's you know what's really going on um right that's Shoot. kind of something we've been teasing about this year. You know, all these guys can post old photos and do this and that and the other, but they have what what's called the you know base. It's kind of based around like a Snapchat type thing. It's yep. an it's an Instagram you know live clip for 15 seconds or whatever. And if it didn't happen on your on your Instagram story, it never happened. You know. Yeah. So we're this year we're just gonna we're gonna Instagram story every guy that we kill and just have fun with it and, and you know. It isn't about the carnage picture for us. You know, a lot of guys throw a stinking ass guy out in their truck and drive around for four days with it, you know, and yeah. pile them all up or whatever. But, you know, that's not that's not the approach we're taking. You know, we're just out there just being naturalists and having fun doing what we love to do. Yeah. And that's all, and that's we, all we can do. It, you'll succeed that way, too. Yeah. And if we kill one or two cows, you'll know about it, you know? Yeah. Or yeah. if we don't kill any, you know, we'll make, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. That's why they call it, that's why they call it hunting, not what killing. Is, what, what is your Instagram now? Is it, it's Brush Wolf Hunter, right? Yeah, at Brush underscore Wolf underscore Hunter. Gotcha. Yep. Yeah, that's an awesome name. I uh, I checked the other day to see if it's trademarked. I was going to steal it from you. <laughs> that's I, all right. You'll be... You'll be you'll be thrown so far under the bus if you steal my name, <laughs> dude. Hey, bad It'll publicity is good for publicity. The rest of bad publicity. I got I got some crazy fans. I got some crazy fans. They'll they'll come right to Wyoming and hunt you down, dude. We all do, and that's what's good about it. Because I mean, you know, and I'm sure a lot of your Instagram followers are followers of you know of other platforms or other TV shows. But you know when they. It's a good thing about predator hunters, man. When they sink in and they soak something up and they enjoy it or they like it or they believe in it, you know, they're, I say fans because it's a fan page. That's how Facebook labels it. But, you know, like Catfish yeah. Cooley, my buddy down south, he goes, I ain't got no fans. I got friends. And, and you know, hell, my instant messenger phone went off the other day and I answered it and this guy was on the phone. He's like, he's like, holy hell, you answered. And I'm like, yeah, my phone rang. He goes, well, man, I can't believe it. And I'm like, hey, I assume you want to talk coyote hunting, and I like talking coyote hunting. So I got four or five minutes. My partner's calling, so let's talk. And oh, you know, that's funny. You know that you made his night, probably. Well, yeah, we talk, and and you know what? You never know. I don't care how good somebody is or how bad somebody is. 
No. Everybody can teach you something. That's right. Everybody. Uh, yeah. You, you know, I have. I used to have a kid uh, that used to hunt with us that used to be a regulator. He could teach you how to scare a coyote off better than anybody in the world. But you know what? <laughs> he could damn sure hit one at 500 yards. Mm. And, you know, um, so I don't know. I can't wait. I'm, yeah, I'm about cool. a month out from my first hunt. And, you know, he's talking about older pictures and stuff, you know. Some years I'm a little more motivated and I have the content and, and, uh, yeah. you know, I post all throughout the, the year and, and, um, but you know, this summer, man, I, I've had so much going on and on my mind. I kind of enjoy the summer, you know, taking the summer off and, I mean, I've still sure. been doing this YouTube deal, but you know, yeah. some people, some people are really pissed off because i ain't been uploading hunts but i'm just like you know i can upload my hunt now when a thousand people are primed and ready to kill a coyote or i can upload them in three months when pe when ten thousand people are um, yeah but you know what it, it's weird though I, i've been watching your youtube page and 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 uh of course being a businessman i watch numbers and do everything everybody else does but you know you're getting some really good solid views out of your youtube channel right now for the time of year it is and it's funny uh, because your views are are obviously reflecting on the engagement from Instagram and other platforms, and you engaging with your people is definitely mm -hmm. gaining you views. My views are yeah. way down. I think you know. I mean, I put a video up a couple weeks ago, and it's been watched a couple thousand times or something, you know. And yeah, and uh, you know, so you know, it's uh, you know, it's this whole deal. This whole deal's a rat race. Have you been changing the subject a little bit? Have you been hunting any lately? Yeah. Uh, well, I don't really want to get into it, but I had pretty tragic stuff happen this weekend. And uh, oh man, I did get out um, Monday, so Monday would have been the holiday for Utah. Yeah. And my wife and I needed to go out and clear some mines, and uh, we made we made four sets and and called one. One good melon, you know, it wasn't a pup. I haven't called any pups in yet this year, but uh, I made a decent shot on him at, I don't know, 200 yards or something like that. He'd come down off some cliffs. It would have made some great footage, but that day wasn't the day to take the camera out. You know what I mean? It was about being out in the brush and yeah, and not not worried about much and <clears throat> stuff like that. But, uh, you know, I, I, I average, you know, that's kind of – I don't know. I've been a 365-day-a-year coyote hunter for a long time, and that's how I became successful in the state of Utah is because, you know, it's kind of ruined now, and it's going to continue to ruin because of, you know, the double-edged sword that I'm messing People with. People like us, yeah. Yeah, you know, and I and I, I see it, and I, I recognize it, and a lot of people get mad at me for it, but I've been doing it for a long time, and... I think I still know ways around it, even if it does get flooded. Yeah. Because the floodedness is, and that isn't even a word, but the floodedness of it back in the day, you know, five, seven years ago when my, my other partner and I were hitting it real hard, we were successful because we were doing stuff different during those flooded times. Yeah. We, we, we adapted to that and then that made us more successful than others back then flooded and i think yeah yeah man yeah. you're all watching and, at home think i'm a freaking hillbilly this guy is something yeah i know and <laughs> utah is utah is they go gangbusters on everything i mean i don't understand it around here but shed hunting is a religion now coyote hunting has become a religion if you live in Utah, you do it 110%. I mean, you yeah. are bald deep just going at it. And uh, it's it's crazy. I mean, it's crazy the tournaments we have and what we have. And we don't have the, we don't even have the numbers of coyotes like other states. And the terrain's broken up a lot different in Utah. And a lot more diverse, I guess. But it's, it's like Colton comes out here with me and he's like, my God, how do you ever call a coyote in this country? How do you see him? How do you do this? And I'm like, dude, you just got to adapt. Like you, you just have to adjust for what we have to deal with. And, you know, 
being a Utah native and being here and living it. That's what, uh, that's what I've done. And, you know, it's made me more successful than others. And that's kind of where we're rolling. Yeah. You know, that's, that's good. I tell you, you know, that's, you you know, that's the only way to get good, really. Um, yeah. Just keep it at, you know, Wyoming, when I first moved here, I had lion hunted quite a bit in Wyoming, so I knew the coyote hunting sucked. And once I moved here, I thought, you know, it ain't going to take me long to figure out if I could just get some motivation up. And, you know, I got the motivation up, and it took me about three days to figure it out. And now I got it figured out. And it's yeah. it still sucks, but you got to work hard and you got to keep after it. And and uh, you know I won't even, dude, I won't even walk. I won't even cross the road ditch unless I got a coyote answer me, and he better answer me right. If he don't answer me right, I just drive <laughs> yeah. on. You know I right. drove. I've drove. Uh, I guess last year the furthest I drove between stands was thirty five miles, and uh, you know here just before I got some to answer me back, you know. And yeah. I ended up calling a double. It was, you know, so, you know, I used to hunt with this guy in Kansas. He said, uh, you know, we're part-time coyote hunters and coyotes are, uh, you know, full-time coyotes. And it really don't matter how hard we try or how, how often we do it or every day we do it. We, we still, we still can't be the coyote. So uh, that learning yeah. curve, you know, like that kid calling me the other day, you know, you never know that guy may have, he may have taught me something, you know, we had a, pretty good conversation about fit cover coyotes and and uh you know i've talked to some some people before at expos that had some pretty harebrained ideas and man they worked you know and uh, <laughs> when it, it, the thing is you got to have a bad enough data to, to keep it going yeah you know, that's the thing so yeah. if you're a beer salesman do you get over here toward wyoming any uh yeah i get up there quite a bit now that uh you know, Colton and I have become, you know, basically he's, brothers. He's down in Casper, right? No, nah, he's right there in Laramie. He is originally okay. from Casper, but okay. uh, he's going to school in Laramie, and and uh, you know, he's been in Laramie for quite a while now. So I got gotcha. you. We've got a we've got a big trip planned. Uh, next Thursday we leave. So where are you going? Hopefully, there's ah uh, things get... are changing with the weather. Oh, I got gotcha. you. So we were originally headed out to my stuff in nevada and idaho border yeah but uh but now we're seeing the temperatures and stuff like that and we got we got some stuff up our sleeve that we're just going to keep on the dl oh yeah you're one of them dl boys <laughs> for a little while dude yeah, I'll, until I'll hits, give you a, until it hits instagram you know and then it's all over i'll give you 2.99 a month if you'll answer a question for me and give me a video now, done deal then it won't and that's two dollars and 99 cents so you can i'll let you subscribe to my youtube channel that's a funny thing people think it costs money doesn't that cost money to subscribe to youtube <laughs> uh, that's all my friends around here you know they're just they're just hillbillies and they're just like man i ain't so i ain't hitting that button they're gonna charge me something yeah you know youtube is not the be the most user-friendly or the favorite platform to get people to sub subscribe to your channel so you really the views is what's important to me because a lot more people watch that than they subscribe because there's just not a lot of Gmail accounts out there. Uh, the iPhone helped us out a lot. You know, you got to have a Gmail account to have an iPhone. So that helped out a lot because usually the little girl at the iPhone place say, "Yeah, you got to get a Gmail account." Blah blah blah, and they'll set it up for them and be like, "Now nah, you can use YouTube and yada yada yada." And you know, it's uh. Yeah, you should check Carbon TV out. Have you I ever? Think I will. Dude, Carbon nope. TV. Carbon TV is awesome. Um, it's a free platform. Everybody listening, go to. I don't know. Google it. Go to Google and search Carbon TV. It's a free platform. They have awesome apps. You can watch it online. Um, you can watch it on your phone. Dog Soldier will be moving its past episodes from YouTube to Carbon TV. We're still gonna keep our YouTube channel. We're still gonna concentrate heavily on it but we are going to play uh pretty big in the carbon tv market and the reason why you know earlier we talked about the youtube channel being left and all that hunky dory crap well if they ever do pull the plug on us and don't want to see real people online then we got to have something somewhere and that's why 
you know, uh, also I was talking to a buddy of mine the other day. He's like, man, the way YouTube's going, I don't know if I really want to play that game. Well, you got to play that game to get your fan base up because if they do pull the plug on some of this other stuff, nobody's going to be able to find you, you know. Right. you got to start from scratch. So building a fan base or subscribers or, you know, partnerships on YouTube is definitely um, – definitely a way to go seeing some comments already you know carbon tv is awesome yeah carbon tv is a pretty good platform uh i actually How is that comment section going right now them girls ever show up no no and they're pretty quiet these guys don't talk a lot ed jagowski i call him jagowski ed's a buddy of mine from michigan he's on there sterling justice from the mfk clan is on here you and bet. uh jefferson hunts hey tyler thies is on here somewhere you, hey. you know Tyler. Oh yeah. Um, let's see here. Everybody else. Pretty... That's one hell of a photographer right there. Brandon Butts is on here. Hey Brandon, good to see you again. Miles is on. What's up, Miles? Jeremy Brown, first time I've seen your name. Glad you're here, brother. Um, Travis Spencer. King Coyotes. They enjoying one. it is the main thing. Are they enjoying what's yeah, going on? Yeah, I mean, they don't what, ever, what do they want to see? What do they want to hear? They don't ever complain too much. <laughs> why, don't you, Good deal. why don't you hookers comment on there and tell us something to talk about? Because I think, uh, I think oh, uh, Garrett, the brush wolf coyote sure. sniper hunter, is getting bored. No, no, hell no. I got a, I got a silver bullet in my lap, and I'm just this sitting is... on the porch, and I just wish I had video live because you guys, you guys have all moved to Utah right now if you're seeing what I'm seeing. I bet you I'm I would. I'm sitting on the porch. I'm looking at 10,000 10, foot mountains and just, oh, yeah. whoo, it's gorgeous here. Yeah, you know, I, it is pretty country out there. But the coyote hunting sucks. Yeah, it everybody. Sucks too. It sucks everywhere. Coyote hunting sucks. You guys can come to tacticalpredatorhunter.com dot com and buy all my stuff, but it ain't gonna do you no good. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's the thing. You won't ever hear. You know what? Al's my brother, and I piss him off all the time, so I don't care. You won't ever hear Al Morris say anything like that. I mean, he'll afraid that Fox Pro Nazis will get after him. You know. Oh, that's- that's too bad. Yeah, you know, it, it you know, gosh, just, you know what? We ain't no different than anybody else watching this crap. It's just. I love Al. He, he gives me a lot of shit while we're at World. You know, he's a Utah guy. Yeah. You know, he knows how to, he knows how to jab me just right, you know? Yeah, you know, he's good at that. Um, You know, we're like brothers. Me and Al and Garvin, we used to hunt together all the time before the black tape kicked in. And this podcast really, uh, you know, really, we went through a little spell there, you know, that was pretty sure, pretty tough. You know, that's the thing. It don't really matter. Um, you know, I've had a lot of things happen to me in the last two years, but I've had some things happen to me in the last three months, or not really so much happened to me, but happened around me that really made me open up and, uh, and see the world in a different light, you know. Um, I mean, you know, like... I'll just be honest with you, like Baker, you know, Baker wasn't happy and, and couldn't find what he wanted, and he wanted to move forward and do his own thing, so he left Dog Soldier, and I, I'm happy for him, you know, I hope it succeeds. He's doing some stuff now, four months ago, I'd have been like, what, what are you, but you know what, we're all adults, we're all grown people, we're all on the same team, really, at the end of the day, and I just want to be positive, you know, like, I've talked to some people here lately that think I'm plum ass crazy because they're used to talking to me four months ago and now they call me and they're surprised I ain't eating vegetable sandwiches and crap. You know what I mean? (laughs) I love it. You know, used to. I didn't talk about being positive. I'd be like, you know, I'm all about, you know, if somebody makes me mad or, or pisses in my Cheerios, I'm all about roughing up their day. But now I just like, whatever, you know, have a good day and. Hope that hope your career works out. I just man, I want everybody to be happy, you know. And, and yeah. Uh, well, you uh, you want to talk about some sounds coming down the pipes by the yes the coyote sniper? Yes, that's why I asked you all ago, and you're just like, hey, I got some sounds going on. You didn't really want to talk. No, about No, let's so. do it. I don't know. We kind of we've been getting a little sidetracked here and there, but let's uh, you know, we got uh, I've been really working hard on some sounds, you know. 
and uh, I got some stuff coming down that's, you know, it, it is different. I don't feel it's going to work any better, but we are definitely going to test these things out come uh, next weekend. Colton's putting a big file of all my stuff together, and, and uh, we're going to go out and we're going to we're going to give it hell. And when the website gets up and kicking, I'm going to be selling some sounds, and and uh, hopefully they're going to bring some guys some success because I I really have I put a lot of time into this and lived with these coyotes and and uh, you know nothing like Rick. I'm not I'm not trying to take anything away from him because he's my boy and and uh, I mean he's put his whole entire life into it and I'm kind of half assing yeah. to tell you the truth. If it yeah, me comes too. down to it, I mean. You know, I, I've had a lot of fun. We've documented everything and, uh, have just, you know, had a lot of fun with, with these little buggers and, and done our deal. And we've got some neat stuff coming down. It's all natural. It's, uh, I don't know if many guys have taken that approach. I'm not, I, I don't have no idea what Rick does. I don't know how he gets his sounds but whatever but everything that i've done has been documented and yeah and and uh it's it's all natural sounds and you we're know, really excited about them so you know where people's libraries shine um i've got a library coming out as well um i've got some pretty good coyote vocalizations and i've got some good rabbits and just normal stuff and that's what i'm getting sure. at you know i don't know if any of our sounds are are you know, you can have better sound quality than the next guy or, or you know, yeah. uniqueness. But, you know, I really think, and for everybody listening, whether it's your library or my library or Rick's library or who's ever, if you hear a sound you like, it really don't matter if whose sound it is. I mean, no, if the, no I, absolutely not. Having, you know, having several different, you know, Byron South, you know, wrote an article years ago and he said it was like fishing, you know. You know, they have all kinds of different tackle. Um, that's 100% true, you know, whether it's hand calls. I mean, I sell five hand calls not so I can sell somebody $100 worth of hand calls. I sell five hand calls because every one of them has a little different pitch or capable of a little different something. And I think, I really honestly think you need that. Yeah. Um, I've been stuck with one hand call out in the middle of nowhere, and it sucks. Because right. you can do so much stuff, and then you're like, well, man, if I would have this, I would try this, or if I had this. So, you know, I'm excited well, to hear your library, and I hope, um, you know, since I'm having yeah. you on my podcast, you could have me on your copy, free copy list. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, I think it's a lot to do, stems back to having success with a sound, because you know, in the past, I was like, "Man, we're we're like out with this sound. Why, you know, why would we, why would we change?" And then you, you know, so if you're having success with that sound, you're calling coyotes in with it. Why change and just keep rolling with yeah. it? You know, but there, it, it's it's a brain thing for me. I feel the Fox Pro sounds are are played out around where I'm from, yep. and and a little bit of new, the the new stuff came down the pipes from Rick and. I'm not going to lie. I mean, my numbers were up. Yeah, maybe I hunted a little harder. Yes, maybe I thought I'd go out one morning that I normally wouldn't go out because Lucky Duck was wanting some pictures or something, you know. So I was out in the field maybe a little bit more, but I'm I'm giving credit to the sounds. I really am. I, I can just keep saying and saying and saying, Rick, 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 but – it really is true. I mean, I've never ever in my life heard stuff like this. I remember back in the day, probably about seven years ago, where Tony was giving me and my partner those sounds for free that he was he was putting out, you know, some fight sounds and some stuff. They were bringing us success. And I, you know, we were playing them, though. You know, we were we were messing around with those sounds more than something else. But yeah, there was a time that I remember going out and it wasn't just one or two coyotes, but it was multiple coyotes that we would sit and set and, and, and turn on the Fox pro. And it was like you shot a gun and you yeah. could see the coyotes running from the sound Oh yeah, because they were, they were so call shy. And 
me and my partner would look at each other like, what are we doing wrong? Like, what in the hell? Dude, that coyote had no idea we were here. We just kicked that on, and that sucker took off like a bat out of hell. Yeah. I mean, you know, and and just, I don't know, experiences like that in the field and coming home skunked and, and grinding my brain about it all night long, a why and what and how we could change it. And, you know, I think sounds do have a lot to do with it. And, and you, know, you know, variations are great for your brain, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, I had a buyer one time at Cabell, and Bass Pro, excuse me, asked me, he said, he said, uh, why do you think the predator hunting market's growing, and why do you think it's so good? Well, it's growing because it's unique, and this was 10 years ago, so it was even more unique. But the thing about it was, is, you know, coyote hunting, the reason it's so recycled, you know, if you if you go grab a turkey call, you may suck at calling turkeys, but if you go where there's turkeys and hear a turkey gobble, a lot of people are satisfied and they keep trying and they, they're going to do this and they're going to do this and they got that turkey in their face, but they just not close enough or whatever. The, and then just about anywhere, you know, with the good management and everything else, you know, whitetail deer hunting, you know, deer hunting. Everybody sees deer now, whether they kill a deer or not, so they're satisfied. Well, coyotes, dude, you could go a long time without killing a coyote and, uh, Holy crap, man. Uh, one of the best coyote hunters I've ever been around, I know, has went over 100 stands dry before. And this was yeah. back in Missouri, you know, not very long ago. We didn't have no coyotes in Missouri, really. And, uh, you know, so all the sounds you can get, all the sounds, you know, the tools of the trade is yeah. really what it matters. Sure. Um, you know, and it's brass taxes. You know, we all make really super calls nowadays. Um, yeah. You know, Rick, the Lucky Duck's a great call. Fox Pro has great calls. Uh, Flex Tone, the Dog Soldier Series, has great calls. Um, yeah. You know, I built my platform. I wanted to be different and simplistic. So I, I built the FLX so it didn't take a rocket scientist or a lot of know-how. I mean, you concentrate on your stands and you concentrate on your your uh, approach and you concentrate on your scouting and then then you should be able to go push a button and, and have fairly good success with with the other elements applied you know sounds and and whatever yeah. so you know the market has changed so much um and of course i've took i've taken summer break so i really don't know what's going on i mean fox pro's got 20 other models probably out by now yeah. <laughs> but uh you know there's just a lot of crap going on um yeah. you know with sounds you know 10 years ago uh fox pro had a great library johnny stewart had a great library wildlife technologies had a great library but everybody else was just kind of slowly doing nothing and then now everybody has a library you know fox pro's library is 500 strong i don't know how many ricks got um yeah you know we use wildlife technology sounds on our calls and next year um, this next season, uh, for all you guys at home, if you can provide me a receipt where you've bought a, um, caller from Tactical Predator Hunter, I will, uh, give you a huge discount on my library, but next year I'm just going to put my library on the call and, and, and sell it, you know, where it'll be only exclusive to my store. Um, you know, so many people's got sounds, you know, Tebby, um, I've known Tony Tebby for a long time and, uh, we're not friends, we're acquaintances, but, um, you know, he's got some pretty good sounds. Um, yeah. You know, so there's just a lot of stuff going on. What I mean, I don't even really know what we can do next. Are we going to have, you know, <laughs> rocket launchers or black The next phone? thing coming out is going to be uh, drone footage is what I'm getting. I'm going to get some drone footage of cows running the call. How about that? You know what? Um, my partner, like <laughs> four years ago, is like, hey, we got to do this. And I'm like, man, whatever. So if you get drone footage, Garrett, dude, you're way more motivated than I am. And <laughs> because me and you both know what's going to happen. But there's going to be that one freaking coyote that's going to let you film him. And, yep. and you're going to uh, you, – well, you remember uh, Tom Austin's coyote footage where the coyote ran over the GoPro. Yeah. You know, when Fox Pro used that on their commercial, whatever, I called him immediately. I was like, dude, please tell me they paid you for that. Because <laughs> that was like, 
Well, now, yeah. like, I think Rick's got coyotes getting shot, and Jeff Nimnick's got coyotes getting shot on that little camera, you know. I think it look sure. like has a camera on it, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, like, you can see the shockwave going. I can't remember if it was Jeff or Rick's who got that. It was it was my buddy Craig Sandy that okay. actually got that. He shot that coyote with a 6.5 Creedmoor. Holy and, shit. And uh, it was the most epic footage you've ever seen in your life. And I, I even said to – we call him Sandman. I was like, Craig. There's no way that you just let that. You just release that for free? <laughs> <laughs> I, I says, man, you could have retired on that. You could have retired on that. No, nah, you ain't getting that for well, free. You know what? When you release your library and you got all these guys working underneath you and they're using your library and they start sending you that stuff, make sure you tell them that they shouldn't be doing that shit for free. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Uh, yeah. Well, hey, dude. But, uh. We're past an hour. I think I'm going to uh, pull the plug on this deal here in a minute. Okay. That sounds all right. I'm freaking tired. I, I've been yawning. Yeah, me too. I, if you wa- I don't know if you're watching the video still. You probably think I'm a prick because I'm sitting here yawning. and It's not that you're boring. <laughs> it's that I'm just like, whoa. And I got this light. You know, I try to lighting and all this crap so my partner don't complain. But, you know, the light's shining in my eyes, making me tired. But. Dude, I'm glad you finally on the podcast, and you got to do it again. Yeah, that sometime. was fun. I had a lot of fun. I can't wait for the one with Rick. I, <laughs> it's yeah. gonna be entertainment. You know, getting him. He's gonna be down. hard to get engaged. That guy's yeah. tough to talk to. You know, g- getting him where he can is another thing. You know, I mean, he's so busy. And uh, oh yeah, you know, I've talked to Jeff, and I've talked to several people. You know, about doing it, and everybody's well. Jeff's know. just a dick. Just plain and simple, Jeff. <laughs> <just a> dick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, he might think I'm a I'm a dick. You know, me. I went up. I went and shot Rollins all the hell last year. And, uh, before they right ready. before. Yeah, I'm going to this year too. <laughs> I went with uh, one of the guys he's hunted with before, though, that I've known forever. So in Randy Shaw's. Um, defense you know i didn't go to any of the spots really jeff took him i don't think um if i did they weren't that good but um (laughs) they were they were shot up i mean you could tell the coyotes there we hit a little pocket we had some good luck in but you know you could tell the coyotes were pretty roughed up around rollins you know you know got rowdy anderson and uh jimmy sapino and all them guys running around down there and i mean there's a lot of good coyote hunters in wyoming and uh there's any coyotes to be killed there's a handful of guys here that can kill them so you gotta you gotta dang sure watch it so sure well man it was good to have you on yeah that was a lot of fun you need to call me sometime all right man we'll do it for sure all right brother be good garrett johnson thanks for being on brother all right right. well have a good night yeah you too take care man all right everybody that was garrett johnson Hey, make sure you check him out. He's a cool dude. Instagram, uh, brush, let's see here, at brush underscore wolf underscore uh, hunter, brush wolf hunter. Anyway, you can find Garrett Johnson. If you're a coyote person and you're on Instagram, you can find Garrett Johnson. Um, check out my Instagram. I don't even know what it is, but it's cool. Uh, YouTube channel. You guys know the YouTube channel. I appreciate you being on here. Remember, tacticalpredatorhunter.com for all of your dog soldier approved gear and Alaska guide creations. If you guys want some bino packs, some hydro packs, some good tools of the trade that I believe a guy has to have to put in the miles to kill the amount of coyotes us guys are killing, you really need the tools to make your life a lot easier. Um, You can get them at tacticalpredatorhunter.com as well. Remember, everybody, think of veteran. Without veterans, we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing. Keep your head up. Move forward. Stay fearless. Don't apologize to anyone. Peace out, homies. That is a wrap.